Hello everybody and welcome to this introduction to the new dope sheet feature inside of Nuke 6.2. Now, the addition of a dope sheet greatly enhances user interaction when dealing with animation timings, keyframe management and basic temporal adjustments of read nodes. Until now, our main method of manipulating keyframes and animation curves inside of Nuke has been in here, in the curve editor, which is an excellent interface for crafting animation curves but is far less suited to accurate manipulation of keyframe timings. This is often due to having multiple parameters and multiple animation curves open at once in the curve editor for reference. Soon it becomes cluttered and it becomes difficult to isolate which keyframe is relevant to which parameter. Now the dope sheet greatly simplifies this by offering a view of your keyframes over time without their corresponding curves. Each keyframe is represented by a gray dot in its position in time. And you can view your keyed parameters either at root level in its most simplistic form, where each entry represents a node and demonstrates all of its animated parameters within it. Or, if you need to do more complex tweaking, you can then dial down inside of each node to view each individual keyed parameter. This works with all nodes, whether they be 3D or 2D. If you're working on a stereoscopic project, you can dial down inside a grade node, for example here, that has been split off and animated differently for left and right eye. And in its most complex, you can delve down inside of a roto shape, inside of its curves, and then have access to each individual control point, and then even delve down inside of that to view each of its individual tangents and feathering tangents. So as you can see, it really is a very, very complex diagram that can also be used in a very simple fashion to give you an overview of your animation timing throughout your entire project. Now, when you first append a node to a tree, you'll see in the dope sheet that it actually doesn't show you any information about that node. This is because the dope sheet only displays information about animated parameters. So if I set a key, you will see that the transform node automatically now turns up inside of the dope sheet. If I close this properties bin here, you'll see that actually the information now disappears. So by default, the properties bin defines whether or not something is showed in the dope sheet as long as it has an animated parameter. Now, sometimes you may want to have your properties bin closed but still retain the information in the dope sheet. To do this, you can select a node, press Alt and D, and that will add and lock that node's information into the dope sheet regardless of whether the properties bin is open. This can then allow you to continue animating parameters with using this as a reference, and you can then choose when to get rid of it by selecting it and pressing Alt-D to remove it from the node graph. Alternatively, if your properties bin is already open, you can either hover over it and just press Alt-D, and this will also lock your parameters into the dope sheet. Or you can use a visual method here by clicking on the node tab, and you can see here there's an entry that allows you to toggle on and off that connection with the dope sheet. So I can turn it off here or on, and with it off you can see if I close down that properties bin, it clears it out once again. Now to truly see kind of the benefits and the way that the dope sheet works, we need to see it in unison with the curve editor. So I'm just gonna split this view horizontally, so vertically, and I'm gonna drag this dope sheet down and give us a little bit more real estate at the top. And then I'm just going to open the parameters of a few nodes here, like so. Now you can see that we've got our curve editor and our dope sheet opened up here. And by default, the two navigate completely independently. Down here, we have this padlock icon. If I select that and begin to move, my two views now navigate in synchronization, which now makes it much easier to see the relationship between a keyframe in our dope sheet and its position on our animation curve in our curve editor. Now, within the dope sheet, we can do all kinds of different tweaks to our animation. So for example, I can just select a keyframe and just drag it around in time, like so. I can select it as I have, and then nudge it left and right using the number pad on your keyboard. So I'm just moving right and moving left with the left and right arrows here. I can double click on the yellow number here and give it a time to move to and it will snap to that time. Or I can move things in increments by adding an incremental 
number down here and pressing move and it will continually move by that increment like so i can also delete my keyframes in here which is a definite great addition and that is obviously undoable and you can also add keyframes so i can press alt and apple to add keyframes now interesting what's happened here you can see that we have these half height gray markers here to depict our keyframes and they've gone half height because actually now these exist on fractional frames if i then select these and move them you'll see now that they've all snapped to whole frames and that they've retained their full height now for those situations where you do want to work with fractional frames you can actually hold down shift and select a key and now you can see that i have the ability to drag that keyframe to any fractional position between two whole numbers if i let go it's going to remain there but if I now want to snap that back to a whole number, I just let go of shift, click and drag. I can also marquee select a bunch of keyframes across multiple nodes. And I can scale their keys like so. And I can move them all either using sliding, using the number pad or using our move incremental. So there's lots of different ways in which you can edit your keyframes. Now to show you the complexity of animation timing that you can adjust using the dope sheet, I'm going to show you this very simple example of an animated rotor shape, as the rotor shape actually contains an immense amount of animatable parameters. I'm going to go into the dope sheet here, zoom in on this, and I'm going to go inside the rotor shape and I'm going to drill all the way down into the curve. You can see here I have four entries starting at zero that represent the four control points of my shape, zero being this one at the bottom. Now, this on its own gives me a great amount of control as it allows me to animate or retime the position of this keyframe just for this one control point. But I can actually go further than that and drill down and get access to all of the parameters that make up this one control point. So for example, I have access to the main control point here as well as its main feather, as well as individually the left and right tangent of each of these two components so for example i can go in here and i can select my main y-axis as it's only animating on one axis if i adjust this i'm just adjusting the timing of the main control point here if i use feather main y i'm now just adjusting the timing of the feather main point now for really added complexity i can select here i'm going to actually just break the tangent on this left hand feather i'm going to move to another frame and just then add a piece of animation like so now i can go into my feather left x and y here and i can actually adjust the timing of that one tangent or that one left hand side of the tangent of just the feather control point and i have that detail of adjustment on all of the different tangent sides for this one control point as well as all the others now that's an incredible amount of detail that you can go into using the dope sheet and very fine adjustments you can make to animation timings. Now the final feature of the dope sheet that I'd like to show you is its visualization of read nodes. I've got a read node here with its parameters open and we're used to adjusting the in and out point of our read nodes here in the frame range parameter and the offset here in the frame parameter. However, the dope sheet gives us a visual representation of all of these fields. I can select the read node and drag it through time and it's updating here our frame position and I can use the handles either end of this to trim the clip adjusting our frame first and last parameters. Now this basically gives us the ability to slide around our clip and trim it. This is particularly useful when you've got multiple read nodes so I'm just going to bring the parameters up of these and I look in the dope sheet and you can see that I can very easily build myself and edit out of my read nodes it's quick it's intuitive it's not a full timeline but it's a way of visualizing where your clips are in time that's incredibly useful especially if you've got multiple clips as well as multiple parameters are animated across different clips so it's very useful once again each of these read nodes can be always shown inside the dope sheet by pressing alt d which will put it in there and you can remove that by pressing alt d again and you can also use this button here to bring every read node into the dope sheet 
so that you can see where they all are in time. It's all very simple functionality. It's not a full timeline, but it will definitely speed up parts of your workflow. So to conclude, I hope you can see how the dope sheet can offer artists a more streamlined and creative environment for adjusting animation timings. From personal production experience, I've already found the dope sheet invaluable in a number of situations, mostly when trying to hit specific animation beats in camera work and when retiming shots. I hope this helps you understand the benefits of this new addition to Nuke. Thanks for listening.